I'm going to be showing you how to tune a Street Demon 625 on a big block Ford today. These Street Demons are basically built like an Elbrock. You got mixture screws down here in the front just like an Elbrock. And uh, they're made like the Elbrock AVS2. You got your accelerator pump here. You got three hole adjustable. Bottom hole is your leanest hole. Top hole would be your richest setting. And then up here on top, you have a, a little flap just like on an AVS here. To get started, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start it, bring it up to temperature. And then uh, you can start adjusting on everything from there. I like to adjust these by ear. But on another carburetor video we done a guy commented wouldn't it be easier to use a vacuum gauge and yes the answer is yes it would be easier if you had one well it just so happens this guy's curious and he wants to know just how close you can get it by air by air by ear and uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to fire this up and we're going to let it run and we're going to adjust it by ear. And then we're going to throw a vacuum gauge on it and see how close we are. Another similarity. These have the uh, meter and rods in them and the step up springs just like an Elbrock carb would. So... That's another way you can adjust it, but that's for your uh, primary jets, is really what these are controlling. And this flap is for all your secondary, everything secondary. But what we're gonna start with is the uh, mixture screws, the auto mixture screws. And then uh, once we get that set, we're gonna go and show you what you would need to do or with the uh, step up springs and the metering rods. I'm gonna kinda show you what these uh, little metering rods and pistons and spring looks like. See the metering rod there? That's what goes down into your jet. You can just pull these out. You see that little spring? And they're called step up springs. And then on the end of this metering rod, you can get different diameters, whether you want to be richer or leaner. These are super easy to change. Like if you go to the track, it's, it's really a nice design. You don't have to pull the bowls off, change the jets, make a big mess. But this is a pretty decent carburetor. I like it other than the accelerator pump design. I don't really care for it. We got it running up the temp. What you're going to want to do is adjust these mixture screws. You're going to want to screw it all the way in until you hear it running rough. When you hear it start to run rough, back it back out until you hear the engine smooth out. You can hear it smooth out and kind of idle up. Another issue? 
issues? Are you having a, a rich or lean problem? As you start to transition from your idle circuits to your main circuits, that's going to be in these step-up springs and in these metering rods. You can change these metering rods and there's different uh, diameters to where it'll richen the main circuit or it will lean it out. You got a big cam and you're not making vacuum, they have different springs that go in here. What happens when you're fired up and it's at an idle, there's a little piston in here that sucks down, it's attached to the meteor rod, it sucks down and it shuts the main jets off. So at an idle, you're just running off of these the idle circuit, which is the fuel mixture screws. When you got a cam and you don't have vacuum, your vacuum won't suck these pistons down that are on the, the meter rods. And they stay open and you load up with fuel and you flood out. So they got the shorter and lighter springs you can put in there for whatever vacuum you have. So it'll be able to pull them down and close off your main jet. Now if you get to where you have a stumble, as your primary or your secondaries come on, what you're going to want to do is tighten this flap. That's the setting for that flap is one tight turn. One turn tight. Do is instead of 16 wrench and a flathead, you'll loosen this, put the flathead on there, your wrench, loosen the little nut, you can turn the flathead screw inside clockwise until this flap opens, and then you turn it counterclockwise until that flap just closes. Just closes, that's your setting is one full turn after it just closes. On this big block, the factory setting was five. I actually ran this carburetor on a small block. I had to go all the way up to four turns to keep it from stuttering or having a, a, a dead spot when it would transition from my main jets to my secondary. But I'm gonna pop one of these open and show you what these metering rods and step-up springs look like. And if you got another issue, when you first stab the throttle and it, it stumbles or it uh, backfires, going to be in your accelerator pump right here. Usually if it just kind of hesitates or stumbles, I'll go one hole richer. Or if it backfires, or it seems like it's too rich, you'll want to go one hole leaner. This is kind of what it looks like inside there. You can see that little gold meter rod tied to that piston. Right now we got vacuum, so they're all the way down. And I start to do this gas, the vacuum changes, you'll see it pop up. When that pops up, that's what lets the fuel work on your veins. Like if I didn't have vacuum right now, that wouldn't be sucked down. I would have to change my step-up spring so the vacuum this engine makes would actually pull that piston down and hold that meter and rod in there. But if you have an issue where you're too lean, you can change that meter and rod to a smaller diameter and then richen it up. Or if you're too rich, you can get a fatter one to lean it out. Now we got it like this, and we kind of tuned it by ear. 
We're gonna hook up a vacuum gauge to see how close we are by doing it by ear to what a vacuum gauge is gonna tell us. Now on carburetors you usually have two ports. You got the, the port that they use for a vacuum advance on your distributor. These ports usually don't see vacuum at an idle. So you don't want to hook up your vacuum gauge there. You want to hook it up to a constant vacuum port. And on this carburetor, it's on the back. So we're going to get that gauge hooked up and see how close we are on the ear tuning. Now we got the vacuum gauge hooked up. I'm going to play with the mixture screws a little bit and see if we get any more vacuum. What you're trying to do here is get as much vacuum as possible by adjusting your mixture screws. Right now, it looks like we're around 11.